Hello, everyone, and welcome to another AOpen webinar. My name is Miles Schofield. Today, we're talking about collaboration made easy with Sharp NEEC. I'm sure you know about them. So I'm really excited because this is one of the first time in a long time that we've had a webinar with a screen partner. And the reason why I'm excited is because screens, very, very complicated market, right? There's anyone can make a screen there from absolutely anywhere. And so it's very, very competitive industry. And the main challenge for a lot of customers is who do I choose, why, and what's the actual difference? So uh, I'm really excited to have Sharp NEC on here today to talk about how they're sort of diving in to this market, what products they're focusing on, and of course, their solution team and how they're adding value to uh, the entire solution and not just the product, uh, the screen itself. So. What are we talking about today? So once again, uh, my name is Miles Schofield. I'm a solution engineer for AOpen America. And I have with me today, Sonia Lobo, a product marketing specialist and George Borden from Sharp NEC, a solution architect. So just to review what we're talking about today, uh, they're just gonna give you a little bit of run through about history and what they're currently doing uh, at Sharp NEC. They're gonna review not only their collaboration bundles and uh, some of their new solution focused products, uh, but also I wanted to talk to uh, have them talk about some of their own other products as well. You know, uh, Sharp NEC does a lot more things, just collaborative uh, screens with touch non for, they do all sorts of stuff, video walls, uh, frameless, uh, borderless and also small bezel video wall things. So I did want them uh, give them an opportunity to talk about those products as well, because uh, yeah, they have a lot of new interesting uh, stuff that's getting uh, some excitement in the market as well. What I'm gonna talk about today is that since we are talking about more of a collaboration education focused bundle uh, today, I figured I would just give a little update on uh, some of the changes around uh, Chrome uh, in education, some of the things they're trying, talk about that, and then just give a, a, a little bit of overview about uh, AOpen devices and how, once again, we, we work with our screen partners uh, in these bundling type of scenarios. So. Without further ado, uh, let's get it rolling with uh, George and Sonia from Sharp NEC. Thanks for joining us. Oh, Miles, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm George Borden, Solution Architect with NEC. And, uh, you know, it's a wonderful day to be working at Sharp NEC, you know, with all the different display technologies that we're bringing to market that we have been bringing to market over the years. Uh, a lot of you out there know us for our flat panel technology, and Sonia's going to begin here in a minute talking a little bit about that. We've distilled the uh, the type of flat panel displays that we work really famously with our AOpen partners, uh, empowering those displays. But also today, we're going to talk a little bit more about direct view LED, as that's becoming more, more and more prominent in the display world. And not to mention, we uh, we have left them out of the deck because you know there's so much to talk about today that we have a lot of projector technology that we work with, and then also small format displays that can be used in various different environments uh, with, within digital signage and, and other areas that are also able to be powered uh, by our partners at AOP and Acer uh, with their wonderful technology. So um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sit back for a minute, and I'm going to transfer, transfer over to Sonia. And so Sonia can tell you a lot, a lot more about our large format array. Sonia. Thank you, George. Um, like George mentioned, I'm Sonia Lobo. I am product marketing specialist at Sharp NEC. I am in charge of collaboration and solutions. So we're gonna be kicking off our presentation today with a little bit about our company and which George already covered. And um, like he mentioned, we're gonna go into our large format and collaboration portfolio. So the overall large format portfolio is shown here. Starting on the left-hand side, we have our E series or an essential series, um, and then fall it follows by the message series. And the main differences between the essential and the message series is the brightness and also um, the run times. The essential series only has 16, seven, and then it only supports landscape, where the message series supports both landscape and portrait, and they have run times up to 24 seven. And within the message series, there is the MA, M, and MA series. And within those tiers, the difference are the brightness. Um, and then moving on to our professional series, is our P series. Um, actually, our P series is identical to our MA series, but the main two differences are Again, the brightness, uh, the P-series is, is at 700 nits, opposed to the MA-series that's at 500 nits. And then also it has a five-year warranty. Moving on to our large 
size products, uh, we have the C and the V series. And we offer those at 75, 86, and 98 inches. And again, the main differences between these two series are the brightness. And moving on, video wall products, our UN series, um, those are offered at 46 and 55 inches. And uh, finally, our high bright series, the XHB series, which is coming on end of life soon. One of the things that's um, interesting, if we can go back a slide, is mm -hmm. that, you know, it makes it really easy uh, for you out there that's using the AOPEN technology to, to put the right display into the right opportunity. And as Sonia mentioned very well that, you know, uh, brightness is uh, an issue because uh, a lot of times I've seen displays that are put in conditions where the ambient lighting uh, is uh, kind of an impediment, you know, to the display itself. And within our technology, we have high haze panels that don't just absorb the light, it diffuses the light. So you can actually diffuse it and have a better viewing experience. I don't know if any of you out, th out there have ever been uh, to any uh, environment, let's say an airport or a retail environment, and then the screen is just hard to, to witness and the content gets washed out, you know, by using one of our appropriate displays, uh, you don't have that problem. Uh, another technology that we have built into the displays is called a SpectraView Color Engine. It's in a few of our displays, and SpectraView Color Engine is unique to to sharp NEC, and that allows for the specific dialing in of a color. So imagine designing wonderful, uh, you know, uh, content with an AOPEN uh, with an AOPEN media player, and then powering it through a display, and it can't uh, articulate those colors to the exact uh, specification. There's a lot of retailers out there that require an exact specification of that color, and NEC can guarantee that to happen. Um, so what we're what we're trying to say here is that we have a, a wide collection of displays that. That are uh, made sense for the right appropriate environment and that we can take advantage of this and ultimately using our team and solutioning we can marry the right display for the opportunity that you have so if you could go to the next example slide um, just a couple of different, different examples that we have here. Um, over on the left-hand side, you can see a, an example of the MA series in action. Uh, that may be a typical hotel lobby or a, a meeting room. Uh, and of course, digital signage is one application for that, uh, where you have the need to have, um, you know, MA has the high nit count of 500 nits. You can see the windows to the left. There's obviously an ambient lighting condition scenario going on here. So that was positioned accordingly to overcome that ambient light scenario. We have dual displays here. So you'll have two different A open devices, or I, I know that they probably have dual output devices as well that could power each one of those displays. Uh, and you can use that. And then on the right hand side, real quickly, we have the UN series. And the UN series was mentioned by Sonia very well at the end there. And that's been our go to market video wall series. Uh, it's been a claim to fame for us for many years. And the, the video wall series boasts a thin bezel so it's a very thin bezel, about 1.25 millimeter bezel, uh, and it's uh, it's uh, it's very easy to put these things together and have a near seamless environment for a uh, video wall. And uh, we can scale these things to uh, a high degree using our our uh, our. Our, our special tile matrix technology. So if you have a two by two video wall, you can feed in through one display with an A open player and you can actually feed through the other displays with our tile matrix in and out. It's sort of like a daisy chaining technology and we can actually daisy chain up to a 10 by 10. So 100 displays can be daisy chained uh, using our tile matrix technology. So if you have an, uh, an, a scenario out there where you're looking at traditional video walls, where you need the, uh, the accuracy of SpectraView color engine, you're looking to have, uh, you know, overcoming any ambient light conditions, we definitely have the portfolio and the specific brands that can help you with that. So when you go to the next slide and tell us a little bit about um, our, our collaboration portfolio. Thank you, George. So in our collaboration portfolio, we have our CB series, which is um, used for entry co collaboration, mainly targeted for education, K through 12, as well as higher education, um, university, and corporate training. And then on the right-hand side, we have our WCD, our Windows Collaboration Device, which we offer it at a 55 inch. And that is actually a very unique size for um, WCDs in the market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 55 is great for 
for, for huddle rooms and small environments mm -hmm. where you have like four to six people meeting in the room. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about the CV series a little more in depth. As Sonia mentioned, uh, there's a couple verticals that we have been positioning and especially in partnership with AOpen and their Chromebox uh, for the CV series. Essentially, it's a 4K display with IR touch and it comes in three different sizes, 65, 75 and 86 inch. An uh, IPS panel, it, it boasts 350 nits brightness. So an anti-protective glare, uh, or excuse me, of glass uh, on the front. Uh, and, and the, the uniqueness about this particular display versus any of our other displays in our arsenal is that it has a built-in media player powering the display running Android 8.0. So it, it's the only player, excuse me, it's the only display in our collaboration portfolio that runs Android 8.0. And that boasts 16 gigabytes of storage within that device. Has powerful built-in speakers, 12, two 12 watt speakers are built in, but it also has digital and audio out capability to liaise with any outbound audio that you're currently using or want to use. Um, where AOpen comes into play with this product that Sonya is going to go into a little bit uh, more in the next slide is the fact that you can plug an AOpen uh, device into the unit with one of the three HDMI ports in the back. And it also has USB that can be attached to that device so you can control the external device from the CV series. So very powerful. You can have up to three AOpen devices plugged into the CV series and you can switch to those accordingly. Um, some, some of the software built into the uh, CV also includes, you know, whiteboarding. So we have a built-in whiteboard software. Uh, we also have a, a minor collaboration software built, built in and a couple other uh, courtesy elements. And from a, uh, from a convenience standpoint, the unit also comes with a wall mount. So if you have wall mount considerations, then this is already ready to go for that. Uh, in, in today's day and age, I tend to advise customers and, 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 uh, and, and resellers and integrators that, you know, because of the changing times, you know, uh, carts and uh, wheels that, you know, you can move the, the device around in certain areas where you have to repurpose rooms. Uh, they seem to be a little more, um, you know, advantageous going that way. But if you need a wall mount, then we have the wall mount available and then Wi-Fi is available as well. Sonia, tell us a little bit more about the bundle that we're doing with AOPEN. So, like we mentioned, um, this is ideal for K through 12 environments. And the good thing about these bundles that we have with the Chromebox is that it ships inside the CV series box. So that prevents anything being lost in distribution and you, you get the complete solution out of the box, plug and play with old cables and connectivity ready. So um, besides the wall mount, it also includes three passive pens. On the right, you can see um, Sharp NEC SKUs for these bundles, as well as the Chromebox option standalone, if you just want to purchase that on its own. So when you go back one slide, we, we skipped over, um, you know, what I would consider one of the most important slides here. And uh, if you want to elaborate a little bit on that, you know, from, from the, uh, the product management per perspective. Certainly. So um, these bundles are so important. I, I keep mentioning education because we're able to bring the Google Play Store to our CV series, something that we couldn't do before these bundles. So that's important because um, all of education, they're based out of Chrome applications and all that. And then you there were also it's offered with full Chrome OS support um, and complete touch support as well. I want to add in, in, in the, you know, the, the built-in media player inside the CV series yeah. that runs this display, it's not to meant to be a replacement, um, in, in my opinion, and most, you know, from a technical perspective, to overshadow the power of an A-Open Chromebox. Uh, so when you're talking with education and the fact that we don't support the Google Play Store inherently with the CB, the AOpen solution uh, definitely comes into play and offers the educator that's in the education vertical, you know, to have that robust performance that they're needing to have with running their specific applications. So, uh, you know, that's a great, it's just a great match. You have the flexibility and ease of use of the CV board. You have the power and the Google, um, you know, the Google coming along in tow, you know, with their hardware solution, which makes it a perfect opportunity and an offering, you know, for the educated minded buyer out there. Absolutely. All right, let's go here and talk a little bit about the WD551. So we talked about the CB series, and as Sonia mentioned earlier, we also have the, the, the new WD551. Now, just real quickly, this is a built-to-forecast uh, opportunity uh, product, uh, meaning that, you know, we have to qualify opportunities uh, to make sure that it fits, you know, for our, our method in which we are entering into the market with this device. But as she said earlier, it's a 55-inch display. 
And the uniqueness about this product, unlike the CB series with its built-in media player and the bundle that we're currently uh, doing with AOpen and any of our other displays that you can attach an AOpen device to, this device does not have a PC built into it. So it is typically, it is just purely a display, comes with a built-in camera, comes with a built-in microphone. It has some sensor technology built in. It even has sensor technologies that can adjust the on and off uh, in, in presence. So it can adjust your, it can detect your presence. But uh, what, where we come into play with this is that you take your A open device, you plug it in, and then you're off and running, ready to go. Not only a Chrome device, but e even if an A open device has Windows running on it where you want to run Teams, you can use that accordingly uh, with this product. And so the built in camera and the built in microphone on our WD551, it is Microsoft Teams certified. So if you're in an environment out there, if you're in a, a, a larger global environment that are looking for a wonderful 55 inch 4K display with touch, that can use a, a, an A open device running Windows uh, for Teams environment. We're, we're certified and, and, and can do that. The other interesting thing about the WD551 is that it has single cable connectivity if the outboard device uh, supports that, and that's USB C. So you can have one USB C cable attached to your outboard device, and it makes it very easy. There's also a couple HDMI connections, just like the CB series that you can attach to as well. So WD551 built in microphone and speaker, one cable connectivity certified certified for teams and then the additional sensors that we have and she has the slide up there where it has ambient light air quality temperature sensor that if, if you need to to record that bit of information uh, as well so i want to add a quick note on the single cable connectivity it also charges your laptop while you're connected so you never have to worry about your laptop going dead or losing power so that, that does a um, good feature while you're yeah, using. It's an important feature. I mean, how many times have you you've been traveling or I've been traveling, and then you know you can't plug yeah. it into some other thing, and you're trying to you know say you're tethered to your phone and you're using USB. -C. Yeah, it's ab absolutely a great feature for that for sure. So one of the things about key markets, and we'll just go over this real quickly on the, on the next slide, Sonia. Uh, you know, again, it's because it's certified for Microsoft Teams. You know, collaboration USB C. You know, huddle rooms, meeting rooms, anywhere where that where that small meeting room uh, is needed. If you want to go to the next slide, we can show a little bit of a couple examples of that real quickly because there's not much more um, to talk about uh, regarding that. So you know, you can see that the small huddle rooms are definitely going to be how we're moving into the future, as as those of us that are getting back into the office and we're load balancing, you know, groups A and B and that we're, we're trickling in certain groups to come in and, and, and maybe there's flex time working from home and working, uh, you know, in, in your office environment, you know, you want something that that can fit the bill regarding, you know, regulations. Uh, if you have social distancing concerns that are still going on and minimal requirements for rooms, you know, definitely the solution can help you with that, not in addition to in addition to the other benefits that we have uh, for that product. So summary, we have two great solutions there that work famously with our AOpen friends. And then no matter what your, um, your use case is, uh, from a large format perspective, all the way down to collaboration examples that we have, we can definitely fit the bill to help you there. Now, switching gears a little bit, let, I'm going to talk a little bit about direct view um, LED because we're hearing a lot about direct view LED uh, these days. And we have, we have a few different direct view LED models to choose from. And essentially, there's a, a few benefits that I personally like about direct view LED. And I know everybody out there, you know, you've heard a lot about direct view LED and how it's expensive and how, you know, there's other, you know, things that have been perceived as negative. And that may be true and it, it may have been true to, at a point in time. Uh, but I can tell you now, the run rate for our direct view LED sales has never been better. As a matter of fact, the pace on it is quite extraordinary how many individuals and resellers and integrators out there are, are looking at direct view LED in favor of upgrading traditional uh, LFD flat panel display video walls. Um, so just real quickly, just kind of like the other two slides, there's there's um, you know pros uh, and and there's different uh, different features with each one of the LED. And on the left we have the FA series, which is the top of the line um, LED that we have in a 16 by 9 format. And these 16 by 9 squares, excuse me, 16 by 9 uh, rectangles, they uh, are put together appropriately in order to fit whatever display desire um, that the end user customer has out there. They also come with these little plates and panels that go in. And we have a little suction device that can come in and out. Uh, if we have um, pixels that are dead, they go back to our factory to get replaced. 
And uh, this particular um, series FA uh, can do up to 1200 nits. So the brightness on, on, uh, on direct view LED is quite extraordinary. The FE series as well uh, with 1100 nits. And then we have the entry level in that same form factor of 16 by nine at 1000 nits. The one thing to talk about that, that if, if you don't know about LED and what's called pixel pitch, then you'll hear like, oh, 0 0.9 pixel pitch or millimeter pixel pitch up to 3.8 pixel pitch. Essentially what the pixel pitch is, is the distance between the, the diodes on the board. So, you know, the larger the pixel pitch, which would be more appropriate for outdoor applications that you see over there on the right with the Q uh, series uh, outdoor, you're going to 2.8 up to 4.8. Uh, we can even do custom pixel pitch up to 16 millimeter where, where it's, you know, fairly far apart. And then a lot of that has to do with the distance in which you're witnessing the direct view LED. So as with our flat panel displays, we have uh, requirements that can be met or we can meet your requirements powering these displays famously with a open depending upon uh, the, the, the viewing distance and the design requirement. Also, we also have a standalone poster. That's the A-series standalone poster that is not only just standalone, but also can be put into a one by four format. And um, you can power that, you know, with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the outboard uh, media player as well. So when it comes to the understanding of direct view LED, there's definitely a whole school, uh, a school of education that can be brought forth. Uh, myself and my solution team can help you get there and get, give you the knowledge that you deserve to learn more about that. And I, I would encourage you to reach back out to me through your friends at AOPEN that can help you do that and we can, uh, we can make that happen for you. Real quickly, I'm running out of time. Um, I wanna just talk a little bit about the next slide there. Um, we make it very convenient to do kitting. So we have different size kits available that you can take advantage of. And we're, when it comes to kitting of direct view LED, one of the major advantages, in addition to what we just talked about with the brightness is that there's no seams. So when I talked earlier about the traditional UN series having a 1.25 millimeter bezel, you can see that it is very small, so it's not that obtrusive. But if you want something that's completely seamless, direct view LED is the way to go. The other thing about direct view LED is that it has a lifespan that can run up to 80 to 100,000 hours before it starts to degrade. Meaning that if you are only put white on the screen, at full blast and the full power that these processors put out to power the direct view LED, it is not gonna degrade until it reaches that, that length of time. So we're talking literally 11 years of full power before the diodes start to degrade. And we're talking about a degrade that just happens you know, very gradually, not, um, not very instantaneously. Lastly, a couple examples here before we get to the end slide and I'll turn it back over to Miles. There's a couple examples of direct view LED. Um, interestingly enough, uh, on the left-hand side is the direct view LED that uh, when you come to our, our briefing center in Downers Grove, Illinois, that is the first thing that you see. You see a beautiful LED uh, that we've had there for a couple of years, and, and we put custom messages on it, greeting everybody that's coming to the briefing center. And then on the right is another example of how direct view LED can be used in a corporate environment. So again, just like any other display technology powered by AOPEN, um, we can make that happen. And then lastly, but not least, and again, we'll turn it over to Miles, is that you know think of us for any of your display needs. You know, not only are we specialists in direct view LED, but also flat panel and small format displays as well. And, and, I, and my projector brothers are going to hate me for this, but I always leave out projectors in any one of the discussions that we talk about, but it is a big part of our business. And AOPEN can power projectors famously. You know, there's a lot of applications for projectors. There's a lot of white space on buildings out there that could be used in an edge blending capacity where you can put projectors together to make wonderful multimedia images, or you can put other types of advertisements and digital signage on as well. So with that, everybody, uh, from, from my vantage point and speaking for Sonia, we really thank you for your time and attention today. I know this is a lot to digest. And if there's any more detail that you need from us, feel free to reach back out to your friends at AOPEN and then we can get on a call and talk about that uh, uh, in, in a private session. So Miles, over to you, sir. Thanks, George. <laughs> and Sonia, of course. Yeah. All right, lots of stuff to talk about there. Um, some things that I just wanna mention quickly is of course, I've been on the brightness high horse for years and years and years. Every time we talk about screens, I'm like, you know, uh, a lot of digital signage you see out there. 
uh, is dimmer than people's iPhones. And you're trying to catch a, a people's, you know, people are looking at a, an iPhone, which is super bright, and you're trying to catch their attention with something that's that's super dim, it's not going to happen. So I definitely think in terms of where digital signage is happening with these new uh, type of indoor and outdoor displays, it's just going to get effectively brighter and brighter. I mean, these guys want to get in your face. They want you to see the advertisement from, you know, a block away. And I think we're, we're, we're not to quite towards Blade Runner where the holograms are going to be popping out on us yet. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be going down that trend where it's going to just become more and more vivid because people are so used to just looking at bright screens all day. You, you're going to have to do something to drag people's uh, uh, eyes away from their phone. And of course, as he mentioned, one of the most exciting thing is, is that new direct view with the, you know, it doesn't have bezel, you know, completely borderless. And so you, now you're going to be able to make, uh, you know, really beautiful large format displays uh, uh, much more affordable uh, in a much more affordable capacity because that technology is being uh, uh, developed and used more and more uh, uh, throughout the industry. So really, really exciting stuff. Um, but today, uh, uh, of course, I'm going to uh, reiterate a lot of stuff that they talked about. We're going to talk about bundles. So the main thing I wanted to cover today is talk about the main thing that we're trying to issue that we're trying to solve with bundles, which is uh, to reduce the cost and the headache of installation, right? Uh, ideally, when you want to create a bundle, there's a million choices to be made, right? And I'll talk about some of those choices, but obviously Sharp NEC has a lot of products. Uh, AOPEN has a lot of products. There's just a million products on the market. And uh, one of the key things that I want to point out that Sonia said was that uh, the bundle that we created with Sharp NEC, it has absolutely everything in the box. Because I'm sure a lot of you have been familiar with projects that are running where the installer gets on site and he's like, so which cable goes from the screen to the you know, the, the HDMI cable isn't long enough to reach the point of sale or the, the, something like that. And then it delays the project and it's just so making sure that the uh, the solution works together and is going to install correctly and uh, really reduce installation time and setup time uh, is incre uh, incredibly important from a hardware standpoint. It's also extremely important from a software uh, standpoint as well, right? Because those installers, they don't know anything about, you know, probably Sharp NEC menus or AOPEN menus or, or it, it, regardless of what software uh, both things are running, you know, you don't want those guys trying to click through and be like, okay, how do I configure brightness mode nine and on um, setting five and menu seven? I mean, that's just wasting uh, your customer's money. So the purpose of creating these bundles and these knowledge bases is to have a starting point where you know you're gonna get something that works and then you can make quick adaptations. So that's what I'm, I'm mostly gonna talk about today about so how some of those choices are made and, and why. So the first one we got to bring up since this is sort of a collaborative bundle. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, we're talking about collaboration boards, both for uh, uh, huddle rooms and also for education. So as I mentioned, I just wanted to talk about why it's important to offer Chrome solutions for education. Once again, is because it's just absolute do uh, dominance. You can see uh, by the, the, the numbers on the left, uh, in a lot of states, it's, it's you know, California, I remember in particular, I think Chrome is, is close to 90. Uh, I think it's gotten, you know, as this uh, worse over the pandemic in terms of the, the dominance and, and Chrome just continuing to dominate. And the thing that I always remind people, everyone knows that the Chromebook market exists, but most people think it's just because you want to give kids cheap laptops, right? The main reason uh, the Chrome Enterprise works for education is because it's effectively an all-in-one bundle, right? Chrome Enterprise allows you to configure everything about the computer, manage it remotely, uh, wipe it extremely easily, and it's massively secure, right? And so it's not the fact that it's a $300 Chromebook that you're buying for, you know, 50,000 kids in your, in your district. It's because you can manage those 50,000 devices with one guy, right? It's massive, IT tech savings, management savings, and, and security peace of mind, right? That's why it's such a dominant thing. So of course, when you're trying to sell any type of solution, a security, a check-in, finance system, a signage system, a kiosk system, wayfinding, whatever to a school, right? Uh, it's always a great idea to have sort of a Chrome back, uh, uh, backbone to it because that's the technology they're all familiar with. And if they're already familiar with the technology, then you're not going to have to train them on Chrome Enterprise and all that stuff. So let's talk about uh, one of the key features, if you're a reseller, you should already know about this, but I just wanted to just throw this out here to clarify a little bit for you who haven't heard this term before, uh, is because uh, Google's been pushing it around in the channel a lot in terms of the, the value that it adds. So one of the trickiest parts 
of uh, trying to manage uh, Chrome Enterprise uh, um, systems and all the devices underneath is sort of how do you solve the problem of, okay, I have a Chromebook that's doing, you know, going to a student, and then I have a, uh, a box that's running a sharp NEC display and doing all that stuff. And the normal way that you would do this in the past, right, is you'd create an OU, and then you'd create an account, and then you'd have to give the account to whoever you were buying the thing from so that when they register the device, it goes in the right thing. And, and it was sort of this weird thing. You ended up creating a lot of accounts. Now you could do it manually, right? When you get your Chrome device and then uh, it takes up a license and you can drag it manually, but you're not gonna want to drag around 50,000 Chrome boxes or a thousand digital signage boxes, right? So once again, it's just a way to automate uh, the the configure the automatic configuration of how to get a device into an OU uh, the most effective way. So instead of creating a million accounts for every single vendor type or every single product type for your school district or whatever your uh, enterprise you're working uh, for, all you need to do is go into the OU, create a token, it spits out a huge thing, and that's all that's used to white glove service the device. So uh, so basically, it's a way instead of creating a whole bunch of accounts, uh, you just generate a little token like a share token and then uh once uh, you put that token into the device it goes right in the ou you don't have to drop it you don't have to create a new account you don't have to make sure that account gets compromised if the token ever gets compromised you just say disable token and then uh you you just create a new one it's super easy so uh that's the whole idea behind zte it massively affects the channel in other ways but from a functional standpoint that's the big value is that uh it allows um uh, devices to be easierly, uh, more easily managed in terms of their provisioning, right? So I hope that that makes sense. I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot more of it from the Google team in the future, right? The uh, the other thing is, of course, is that uh, Google uh, 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 is, of course, trying to uh, uh, continue their dominance in education. And so they're working on even more technologies uh, that haven't been released yet. Uh, next year to sort of uh, expand their influence uh, into not only education, but of course, enterprise and healthcare and other areas that uh, they're targeting for these type of applications. So uh, to sort of, I decided to sort of make a <clears throat> sort of an, a, an overarching slide in terms of uh, some of the things that George was talking about in terms of all these decisions and like, wait, the TV runs Android, but then you need a box that maybe runs Android or maybe runs Chrome or maybe runs Windows. This is, these are the, the mass amounts of decisions I'm talking about is and why you wanna to talk to someone like George when you're, when you're putting up a digital signage solution is because the, so, uh, uh, the, the, the difference in what you're trying to do can vary, for, uh, uh, can cost you thousands of dollars of difference, right? So you need an expert to make sure that you're choosing the correct product. So the type of solutions that you wanna make is uh, so screens basically have a various level of computer computing power, right? Most of them have some sort of basic uh, processor in them, like an SOC that controls a little menu that pops up. And you can, of course, a little menu that pops up, some sort of uh, more advanced features, but it's not like it's running Windows in there, right? Um, so that's sort of a base, like regular TV. And then the next one is sort of those uh, that screen, that CB series that George was talking about, is that it has a, a better SOC, usually ARM-based in it, uh, runs Android, and that's what most people consider a smart TV. Like if you go out, buy one, throw one in your home, and it supports Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that. And so it's sort of got a very low powered uh, device that's specifically just run, uh, uh, made to run specific web applications. And then uh, you have this other type of SOC, which supports those applications, but also some other stuff. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of manufacturers that try and write the entire OS themselves. So uh, the, the, the type of stuff that they run and support and the processing and all that stuff is completely variable, right? Uh, the next one, of course, is you can have a screen with a built-in slot that basically fits an entire computer, right? The old OPS, uh, AOPN had, had uh, still has OPS units. We even uh, worked to try and push the, the mini OPS standard uh, in the China market for a long, long time. And then Intel has been and thrown around the SDM market. But the whole idea is that you're spending a lot of money on an extremely high quality display. Why don't we just put a really easy mounting slot in the back so that you can just upgrade the, uh, the computer as time goes on. And so you always have the newest security and support uh, attached to the back of your screen. 
And then of course the last one is where you just buy the really high quality display. It's pretty much isolated. And then you just have something else drive it like uh, an AOpen computer. So you can see that depending on your choice here, you could be getting the same screen, but it could be a thousand to $2,000 difference depending on the processing power of the, the internal computer of the, the, the screen itself. So what happens a ton in this business, especially when you're just surfing for screens online is that you pick a screen and then your, your software co uh, company that you're working with is like, oh, it, run, it doesn't support the newest version of Chromium. Uh, yeah, unfortunately we're using a modern web architecture where you need at least uh, you know these type of libraries supported and can your screen fix that and things like that so that's why it's so important to put all the pieces together before you start spending a lot of money on computers and screens so i hope this makes sense in terms of a lot of the choices that you have to make when you're putting putting together even a real simple digital signage bundle the last thing of course that i bring up in a lot of webinars to this point is what aopen per uh, particularly focuses on is of course the, la the last use case right in general when we uh, most of our solution providers focus on very high-end uh, web applications that aren't gonna that run very dynamic ads dynamic sensing uh, they do a lot of things uh, trying to pull twitter feeds processing sometimes video processing as well and so uh, you're not going to get that to run on just a, a, a regular SOC platform. That's why George in this particular instance mentioned that, yeah, they're, they're into a computer, it runs 8 .8, uh, Android 8.1, but you want to you know, have a fully supported Google Classroom experience. Yeah, you're going to get that on the Chrome box and that way, you know, that screen can be there for years and years and years, and you just upgrade the Chromebox every few years if you're trying, if, if needed. So it, it adds that extra flexibility uh, and AOpen focuses on what we call fully functional computers, right? Something that runs usually a uh, full version of Chrome OS or things like that. So that's uh, AOpen's general philosophy about the types of products that we choose uh, to manufacture. So give you an overview of what we manufacture is in addition to that point about trying to create fully functional computers uh, for the space and not, uh, not really SOCs uh, is that, yeah, uh, our goal is really just to make the longest lasting mini PCs across the board, right? The longest lasting Windows, Limit, Linux, Chrome, and Android devices, right? That's really our goal is just to do that. No, nothing super fancy. We just want a real reliable device that uh, causes the least amount of headaches, right? So we have all those uh, and feel free to, if you want specific information about any types of single dual screen players, whatever that we have for those particular solutions, let us know. And uh, we do have uh, a few video well solutions. We, uh, the main one we have that we're known for is just a straight 4 HDMI uh, out player uh, for that simple two by two use case. And the reason why that's sort of important is because you know you can run a two by two video wall off of uh, lots of devices now because I have people call me and be like, oh, I'm trying to run a video wall uh, using uh, two uh, USB 2.0 to HDMI uh, converters. And then I'm using the mouse port as a video driver. And I'm, I'm just like, what? No, <laughs> like <laughs> keep it simple, right? This is what we're talking about when we're putting solutions together is that you don't wanna start really complicating things. That's when you start to get in real trouble because when something goes wrong, your software guy is going to be like, I think it's the weird adapter you're using. And then this is this is what happens, right? Um, so yeah, so we just uh, offer real straightforward, easy to use two, two by two video wall driver, of course, works with uh, Sharp NEC displays. And then we, we have a few uh, all-in-one displays as well. Last one I want to mention is of course, uh, something that uh, we, we introduced this year uh, and it's really uh, uh, about those huddle rooms that uh, George mentioned. And the whole idea behind the KP180 is that it's a camera that is designed to be used in a small uh, huddle room because it's 180 degrees, right? Small huddle rooms, what are they? Like 15 by 15, sometimes 12 by 12, right? And what always happens is that you have your regular webcam, which is designed to look at exactly one person sitting in front of the computer. Uh, and then you have the hidden guys on the side that are in the meeting that you never see, right? So this just solves that problem, right? It captures absolutely the entire room. And so it's a really cool, it's an extremely affordable product. This is, a, 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 these type of solutions in the camera space are traditionally very expensive. So AOPEN decided to offer uh, a really uh, low cost version of one into this market. So, uh, and it's used a lot in education too, because now that it's all teach from home, you can get the entire classroom, things like that, the entire chalkboard or whiteboard now, uh, things like that. So the other thing I wanted to mention that George brought up is uh, this whole concept of 
uh, what I think you said something like build the forecast or something, but this is something that you may hear a lot uh, in the, in the future, especially from hardware manufacturers like AOpen and Sharp, because times they they've they've changed, right? Um, I'm sure you've seen the news for the past uh, two years in terms of oh, there's a chip shortage, there's a gas shortage. Yeah, it, it's uh, what basically happened is that manufacturing got very condensed right and so uh, a lot of screens actually went through a massive crunch last year and so laptops and lots of screens were extremely difficult to uh to acquire and so this whole concept of of uh lots of products uh like you know having very you have no idea whether they're going to be available or not or for if you order you know a thousand of them are they going to show up that's why you got to work with real brands right sharp nac uh, if they say they're going to get you the screens and uh, you order them, and like George says, you forecast them, they're going to get you the screens. Same thing. AOpen is part of Acer, and that's the main synergy that we drive with them, is that if if you're a small fish in a big pond and you're trying to get screens to make your laptops or Chromebooks or whatever, yeah, you're sort of at the mercy of whatever the market uh, forces are sort of telling you. But, you know, we're part of Acer and we, we're... Uh, we're allowed to use their sort of position to make sure that uh, we can get the right products uh, or the products to our customers in a reasonable time and forecast them correctly for our customers. So of course, you know, same thing as Sharp NEC, we stock in our regular products uh, and, and then we have these other set of products that uh, when you forecast them, we of course can draw you up a timeline, you know, as he said, verify the project, blah, 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 and make all that stuff happen. So that's a very important part of our business too, because we realize that, you know, people who have custom needs, right? All right, so as I mentioned, the main thing that both Sharp and AC and AOpen do, there's there's so much stuff in the market, right? Uh, anyone can make a, a box that has a computer in it, and there's tons of just random screen brands out there. And the main thing uh, that we try to push is just the, the idea that you're buying a quality product that's gonna last longer and cost you more mo uh, less money over time, right? So we call that TCO. It's how much you're gonna spend on the product over a five-year cycle, right? Uh, instead of just buying the cheapest thing, right? You know, are you buying uh, the reliable car and paying more uh, up front, but it's going to last you 20 years? Or are you going to buy the cheapest car possible and then pay for maintenance every two years, uh, you know, for 20 years, right? Same concept, right? And that's the whole idea uh, behind uh, buying an AOpen product or a Sharp NEC product is that you're buying something that you just want you don't want to have to deal with maintenance guys you don't want to have to deal with all these different problems and so you want a really just reliable product low failure rate and that's and when you're running a business the thing i always tell people is that when you're running a business anything like that is a severe detractor to what you actually want to be doing which is making money right uh i have experience with tons of small businesses and all these stupid tech things are just such a thorn because you're trying to run your business uh, acquire company uh, customers get marketing happening and then you're like you know some guys like oh your your converter between screen one and five doesn't match with and you're just like i have no idea about this stuff and you have to pay through the nose to get it yeah it's a, it's a mess right so that's the whole whole idea uh behind uh, the type of products uh that we offer and, and you can see that yeah uh, of course if you want a regular type of uh, um, consumer product, as we call them, yeah, we we have all that through a Acer as well. And AOpen is more on this, what we call a uh, commercial or industrial type of um, mini PC. All right, actually, let's wrap things up. Are we about that time? So uh, what did we talk about today? Uh, Sharp NEC, the whole idea behind the bundle, like I said, is to solve all those issues of uh, installation, maintenance, and support over time, right? uh that's the that's the whole idea the pieces are put together they're tested you know they're going to work uh that cb bundle comes with a default stand but if you want a different uh, sorry mount but if you want a different uh mount you know uh sharp nec partners with peerless and they know their catalog and whatever you want to mount it to they can figure that out and that goes let leads me to point number two yeah what are you getting from a solution team right you can surf screens all day this many nits this many size blah 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 but like I said, the reason why you need uh, a team like George's to talk to, and that's the massive value that people get uh, from AOpen as well, is because you can talk to our tech team and be like, does this run on Chrome OS? Or is this supported in this web browser? Or why am I getting this uh, user authentication issue in this user mode and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're here to answer those types of questions to make sure those solutions uh, fit together. So 
AOpen has a team uh, and uh, Sharp NEC has a team so that you can and ask those questions. I'm trying to run this. Is it going to run your SOC? Is it going to run on your Android system? Do I need to plug in a box? Should I use a SDM module? Uh, should I use a daisy chain video well? Should I use a straight video well for HDMI connectors? If you don't know those questions, you got to talk to someone uh, because just buying the screen off Amazon is not going to answer. <laughs> Right. If you scroll down in Amazon, the, all those questions aren't going to be uh, uh, there in the frequently asked questions. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, another uh, uh, value to our, our products in general. And of course, uh, AOpen, uh, we try and offer uh, the most rel uh, reliable uh, mini piece solutions across the board, Windows, Chrome, Android and Linux. So we have a lot. We have some really great devices. This is probably the last webinar for the year, but we have some really great devices coming out early next year. Keep an eye out for those because um, we're really excited about those. Uh, and I think that's about it. So let's wrap this webinar up. Um, the uh, The main question uh, that I wanted a little bit more information from you, uh, George, was, was that how do you see the um, uh, markets recovering? So in terms of who you're talking to, uh, lots of people say, oh, education is just they're completely switched back to, you know, they're all gonna keep doing the, the school from home uh, and with the work, you know, is everyone still gonna be worked to, from home? So have you seen the market recover? Are you getting a lot of calls for collaboration and for huddle rooms? Do you see that market recovering or do you think it's still gonna be a while till uh, students and workers go back to the office? You know, the optimism is there, the, the, uh, the movement forward to making that happen is happening. Uh, you know, to the degree that we want it to, absolutely not. You know, we always want more, just like everybody wants more. We want it to get back to the way that it was. But I, I like the optimism and the, the fact that people are now being proactive instead of reactive. Because when everything happened, you know, 19, however many months it's been, I lose track. You know, we were, we were thrust upon this. And a lot of our, our folks that we work with didn't have a battle plan. They didn't know how to adjust. And uh, now that we know, so we're, we're, uh, we're working with getting, you know, folks in education, the, the products that they need, uh, you know, they're thinking about, you know, using things back to a normal way. But like I mentioned, when I talked at the very beginning, they're, they're taking a cautious approach, you know, of, of having that happen. But yeah, I'm seeing definitely an uptick and we're seeing an uptick in, in all of the fronts of all of our uh, display technology for that to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. My, my perception of the, uh, uh, the market, uh, uh, at least from my viewpoint and the people that I've talked to is that maybe the huddle rooms will be a bigger a bigger piece and actually a larger market in the future because technically if you're using the office less you're going to need less of those 30 person right uh, office uh, office spaces right uh, or, or meeting places so maybe huddle rooms are just going to uh, surpass pre uh, uh, pre covid sort of times because uh, office space is of course going to be uh, shrink down right uh, that's one of the main conversations I always had was that, uh, especially when I talked to smart building and IT managers for enterprise companies, is that uh, behind uh, uh, behind OpEx, the number one cost for an enterprise company is office space. So do you really need those large meeting rooms, right? So, so about it. they have yeah. to repurpose this now. You know, there's a companies that I'm talking with that they had everybody, let's say they were a thousand person company in one facility. And, and now because they're going to load balance from home to work, they're, they're, they're trying to figure out what to do with that additional real estate. And uh, it's interesting to think about some of the concepts that they have, which we won't have time to get in here to today, but that's just going to happen. And that's, that's the, the part of the outcome of everything is to, to figure out how we can use this technology smarter, you know, to help increase the quality of our lives. Uh, a lot of people have gotten a raise over the pandemic that I usually don't like to, to, to bring up because they didn't have the commuting cost, they didn't have the go out to eat cost. And all of these things that you know were imposed upon those that worked into an office, they, they don't have to do that anymore. So people have realized that, employers have realized that, and but now they have the problem from that expense uh, standpoint of the existing real estate, what to do with it. And I know they'll figure out what to do with it, uh, but yeah, th th those are definitely concerns that they have to go into. Hey, one thing I wanna mention real quickly when you talked about in the industrious uh, nature of, of the A-Open solution, I, I wanna just show everybody that I have one of the industrious A open Chrome boxes here uh, in, in my my arsenal of other technology, and uh, it was a uh, we really appreciate your um, your sentiment about our display technology because we too are commercial only. 
and we do make things industrious. So when you buy our display, it is definitely made of, of metal. It's heavier than uh, most displays that you'll ever touch out there and the componentry is rock solid. And, and I really appreciate you know the form factor of this device and just what a, a solid piece of equipment that it is. I wanted to just give you a nod for that. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, George. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You know, that you got to use higher quality components and make it just be able to be able to run over by a truck to achieve that 1% failure rate, right? And put it in perspective, what I always say is that, you know, if you buy a consumer screen or box, you know, failure rates, you're, you're pushing even the best screens, uh, consumer screens have a failure rate of about 10%, lots of times 20. And so you're looking at a, a, a an order of magnitude, uh, which means that, you know, if you buy 100 screens, uh, consumer screens, 10 of them are going to fail, but you know, maybe one commercial screen is going to fail. And so that's the sort of value you're looking at when you buy uh, commercial over consumer. So um, the, the other thing I wanted you to talk about briefly, uh, George or, or Sonia, is uh, you mentioned that you're getting a lot of traction with your direct view LEDs. Any particular verticals or uh, customer types that you see taken off? Are, are people spending money in QSR? Are they going into uh, uh, corporate comm? Are they going into... So what sort of verticals and uh, use case are you primarily seeing that new tech go into? All of the above, um, the, the travel, um, you know, uh, should I say, you know... Yep, definitely for those, um, you know, all of the above is really popping sports book, um, you know, gambling institutions, you know, they want that wow factor, um, you know, the above QSRs and airports, you know, I've, I'm seeing a lot of LED uh, being used because it can be used in, in such a, a unique way, again, by being one seamless piece of real estate where you can power it accordingly with whatever content that your content arts and crafts department wants to put together. The LED can make it pop. And then you, you brought up the point that I was you know, talking about from a geek standpoint is that the nit count and the brightness is kind of what really gets your attention. You can turn that thing up pretty bright to where it's almost uh, obtrusive, but you can turn it up just enough to where you can get that, that customer's attention and the attention of the audience. And so that's another key factor about that. But you know, there are some, some uh, verticals that do stand out, but you know, like I said earlier, the, the direct view LED is really starting to take off in a lot of ways because it's now becoming uh, more palatable for folks that thought it was prohibitive uh, due to the nature of its cost difference. Exactly, yeah, I brought that up too. And that's the most exciting thing, thing to me is that those, that, those old tile-based technologies, amazing stuff, really, uh, but you'd only see it in like Times Square, right? Uh, because it was just an, impo very expensive to manage, set up, and, and maintenance. And, uh, you know, for years, you would see those guys trying to set up those tile displays, and they have all these tiny little tools trying to get to, but, you know, this this new tech, uh, you know, makes it smarter, better, faster, easier, more affordable. And so it's, I, I feel like it's going to be integrated in more spaces for sure. Yeah, I mean, Times Square is the crossroads of the world and that's where everything gets noticed and now you can be a small qsr in your region and you can have the Times square effect yeah. and and with the with the management and, and you know from a company like ours it's going to take care of you the spare parts and of course when you're powering it by a open you're going to get all the benefits that come from 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 your build as well so it's it's definitely make it gives you that 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 wow factor that attention grabber that you're looking to get to pull folks into your business to get them talking about your business so that you can make more sales and gain more customers. Absolutely. Yeah, agreed 100%. Let's co co uh, close it up. Was there anything else on your mind, uh, George or Sonia, before we, uh, that you wanted to mention? Just, uh, I want to say thanks again for having us on. Um, it's an honor to be the last webinar of, of your year, you know, because I always say you either think about us first or last as long as you keep thinking about us. <laughs> so, well, so, uh, you know, I really Thank you for, for having us as a partner. Yes, thank and, you. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. I learned a lot today. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll have another one next year. See see what your solution team's been up to because you know as I mentioned, you know uh, uh, Sharp NEC, you got to think of them more than just a screen, right? They're a team. George has a team where they're always putting stuff together, uh, making stuff work, and uh, coming up with new ideas. Uh, to better um, get this tech out in the market, right? So yeah, maybe uh, we'll see what you're up to next year and, and uh, run it again. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, and I learned a lot today from you guys. So, uh, and of course, everyone, thanks for joining. So uh, until next time, uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye.